Vice Presidents, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it was said that a digitally aligned government must reflect in a digitally aligned society. The words of Mr. Kofi Adumako, which brings us to the keynote address to be delivered by the CEO of the Margins Gap Leading Entity Company, spearheading digitization to secure access and more. Would you please make welcome Mr. Moses Baden Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not wonderful to be back once again in human form instead of remotely in a meeting like that. Last year we missed the CEO and I thank NSAG, the founder and convener of the CEO Summit for inviting me to give a keynote address at this 2021 fifth CEO Summit, share my thoughts on the power of digital ident identities in resetting Ghana's economy. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Honorable Ministers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, fellow Chief Executives, Captains of Industry. In 2017, I had the privilege of delivering a keynote address on the Fourth Industrial Revolution and its relevance to moving our economy forward. And that dialogue focused on the opportunities that were presented to leapfrog Ghana into a new digital, social, economic, and political future. And I made six key points that I'd like to reiterate again in concluding that keynote address. I said in 2017 that digitally constrained economies are deficient largely because they have yet to establish a digital ecosystem that can capitalize on the benefits of digitization. I also said at this point too that we must take advantage of our demographic dividend with our youthful population to train our youth with new digital skills that will enrich them to enter the modern digital economy and enable, enable them to scale globally. I called for the rethink of our educational system and the optimization of our curriculum so that it would be more pragmatic and suitable for this digital age. The fourth point I made was that our businesses must digitize and be data-driven to allow us to compete and strive for excellence globally globally with, the deep, with new digital systems, processes and tools that are now available to all of us to scale globally. I also called for the building of a meritocratic and values-based environment that promotes a pursuit of efficiency and productivity, an environment that will create and grow digital entrepreneurs who will build a digital infrastructure that will expand our companies and our country's economy. I call for the government to become a digital market maker and to create the best environment within which Ghana will become a destination of choice for businesses globally, both physically and digitally. I also call for successful transformation of our economy through the changes of policies and laws which are realigned to be relevant to the digital age. Key elements of these policy and legal reviews were to be the protection of intellectual property, the respect, commitment, and enforcement of contractual rights that are crucial to the growth of a modern digital economy. I identified also 14 essential features of the digital age that underpin the fourth industrial revolution and digital transformation agenda, and that will rapidly, rapidly accelerated the digital speed of our economy. Now, one of the key elements of those 14 features was a call for a national electronic, digital, and biometric identification system. And so based on those key 14 features, let me now direct my attention to the immediate topic of a digital electronic identity and its impact on the national economy of Ghana post-COVID-19. 
COVID-19 has demonstrated to us everything that we talked about in 2017. It's accelerated realization of companies, individuals, and our country on the importance of digitalization and the need for being able to do business through digital channels more efficiently and to transact business contactless. For us at the Badgers Group, we have been already prepared four years prior to that in resetting ourselves in the new digital um, platform to ensure that when COVID struck, not only did we not see any drop in efficiency of all um, business activity, but we actually thrive better as most of our members were able to work remotely using digital platforms and collaboration in documents and uh, computing in the cloud and conducting business with various video conferencing tools and platforms. Despite that, most of our partners, both local and international, were not ready because they had not adopted the digital systems that we kept advising them on. The COVID-19 pandemic is the most significant global disruption of our time and has completely transformed the way in which we live and interact with one another. Digital adoption has taken a quantum leap at both organizational and niche industry levels, and customer needs now demand offerings that reflect new health and hygiene sensitivities. Cashless transactions, remote working practices, and virtual classrooms to educate our children are now part of the new normal. People prefer contactless transactions that are giving their patronage to companies who are invested in digital tools that are able to facilitate these transactions. Companies are no longer competing locally, but on a global scale. In 2020 alone, the mobile money interoperability platform in Ghana recorded, all, recorded almost up to 100 billion in contactless, in contactless payments, contactless mobile payments, which is a 536.2% 5 increase from the year before. Now, now why is such a quantum loop? Leap? Well, of course, it's because of COVID-19. I'd like to congratulate our Vice President for the Initiative for Interoperability in Payments, which made this possible. So when COVID arrived, we were ready with mobile and contactless payments. That is what I mean by saying that government must become a digital market maker for the private sector. Bank of Ghana recently has been issuing PHP license for digital wallets to support an increasingly massive increase in digital transactions. The entire supply chain has been disrupted. disrupted. Items can be ordered online and delivered straight to your doorsteps right here in Accra from Wache to Catfish. There is no longer a pressing need to travel to obtain items you want. That is probably very expensive for husbands because of late, my wife has taken to shopping on exclusively on Instagram, which means money goes out of my wallet faster. The impact on service delivery business have been forced to innovate to stay afloat, resulting in efficient delivery services. Notably, just a few weeks ago, Tesla announced that it was accepted Bitcoin, which means Mr. Governor, the digital currency area is open us. Although, just days ago, they rescinded that decision because of the carbon footprint associated with massive energy consumption by supercomputers used to mine coins by crypto mining businesses. But that does not change the fact that the digital currency is approaching. Even funerals have been transformed and are taking place live on live streaming platforms, and donations are being received quite efficiently digitally, and food delivered in packs. The world has indeed changed, and technology has taken center stage. Today, digital identities are more important than they ever have been before. We are a community of people that now need to be verified on multiple flat platforms guarded by physical and logical access control systems. Just take around a look around this room our faces are still covered in masks. You can understand the U.S. says after our second job, we probably can't do without masks. We hope that time comes. But if you are wearing a mask, who are you really? Can you be who you claim you are? 
or as an imposter pretending to be you. In the digital world, even scarier, identities are stolen daily and billions of dollars are lost as a result of identity fraud. To be safe, we must rely on our electronic digital avatars to safely connect us through secure devices to product services and solutions in order to ensure that the digital infrastructure that we build does not crumble because of crime and illegal transactions done on our behalf by max men, not your fiscal max man, but your digital mass avatar. Our communities have been challenged to think differently and innovate in order to survive the health and economic solutions of this pandemic. Policymakers and citizens must adopt a multi-sectoral approach to harness innovation and emergency technologies, both locally and globally. This means regulation needs to catch up, as it unfortunately continues to lag behind the ingenuity of the digital space, its dynamism and its speed. So, if digital identities are important and we need to protect them, the question is, let me attempt to define what an electronic digital identity is and break it down in layman's terms before I go into the rather technical industry description of it. In layman's terms, a digital identity is what enables people to verify on a platform, on computers, on portals, and on the internet that you are who you claim you are and there's a certain digital history behind you that confirms transactions that you do. So your username, your passwords, your basic behavior, and other information on you, the date of birth, and your unique numbers like a social security number, your online, say, all form part of your digital identity. But that's in the, in the broad sense. However, a digital identity, in a technical sense, is a simple, unique primary identifier for people normally from cradle to grave in the case of individuals, which is an essential foundation for identification. In the USA, it is a social security number. In Denmark, it is a CPR number. In the UK, it's a national health insurance number. In Ghana, it's the Ghana card pin that identifies each person in the national identity register and ensures that they exist only once in the database. Now that's the first step. The number, is then attached to data fields on the registration form that contains all the identity data fields collected by both public and private organizations. In the case of the National ID Register, Ghana's Register, citizens are required to go through an interview, establish a legal identity, provide the proper uh, birth certificate or passport, which is then verified through an interview, and then after that, their biometrics are taken and attached to that unique number and that data pieces, and, and the data fields that are collected by all identity collecting institutions. In addition, a digital address is added to, to that data set. And then the data set in real time to an automatic biometric identification system that looks through the database in a matter of seconds, approximately three seconds, and returns the data that shows that you're not, you don't exist twice in the database. Information is then personalized to the Ghana card. A digital certificate, which is an end user PKI, is then put in it. And this card has three interfaces. One is an ICAO passport, which is for sanctions for travel in West Africa, and hopefully for sanctions for travel globally. The other profile is an EID profile that meets international standards. It's open and it's interoperable to all digital platforms who have the right interfaces. So it means, as a Ghanaian, you can authenticate your identity anywhere in the world, provided they are inter inter in you're inter interacting with a, a portal that is, has a standard security interfaces, whether online or in person. The card also has another profile, which is a match on card profile that can, can compare your live biometrics with the biometrics stored in your card in real, in, real, in real time and confirm that you are who you are. It also allows the um, SPKI certificates authorized by the country certificate authority of NICHA and then also digitally signed by a sub-certificate authority of the National Identification Authority. This card can carry public and private keys 
and certificates that allows you to interact digitally, remotely, and in person across multiple complex platforms, digital platform. So that's the Ghana card for you. With the national ID having, uh, having crossed the 50 million mark, that means the 50 million people plus have a digital avatar on themselves, an electronic ID that's secure to international standards to be able to carry out digital transactions, both private and public. In this regard, I must applaud the government, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, for evolving and implementing an electronic and biometric identity system, which was the first put on tender in 2003. First put on tender in 2003. And now between 2019 and 2020, the National ID Authority, which is our public partner, registered over 15 million Ghanaians just in one year. Well, we hadn't been able to do that for over 20 years. Now, over 50 million people were also successfully issued electronic identity cards during the mass registration exercise. What is the effect of all this? An electronic national identity register will transform our economy and exponentially increase its digital index and grow our GDP. Citizens can access government services electronically and securely and make payments based on a certified legal identity that is robust, secure, and prevents fraud and financial crime. Compliance will be without a human interface and will have the real-time, date, time, and location stamp with any identity transaction by a number that is generated by NID, NIA and confirmed to the persons who they claim they are. To Vice President, I can see that the mobile payments will double in volume if they can be made more secure, which means the current issues that we have with people impersonating and, and, and you know, perpetuating fraud on people in the mobile money ecosystem will be completely eliminated because people will be who they claim they are. We can overcome the frustration of human interfaces which creates inefficiency and breeds corruption in the access of government services. The robust and secure Ghana card electronic identity will prevent fraud which is perpetrated by stolen identities, fake identities, and multiple identities created to facilitate crime. A clean national identity register will create a clean digital ecosystem and a transparent government and e-commerce digital environment that will help us fix the country. The government has started implementing policies to deepen the digitization of all government services. And the Vice President of the Republic, which is nicknamed the the digital doctor has recently announced new policy initiatives that are in the right direction. Key amongst these policies are the Ghana card pin to replace tax so that everybody can pay their equitable share of tax. And, and some people will be less burdened, overburdened. The Ghana pin to replace that has also recently been announced, ensuring that our social security transactions will now be connected to identity and fraud and uh, delivery of pensions will be faster and more efficient. The Ghana card pin to replace national health insurance, which will take the fraud out of national insurance, health insurance providers, etc., ensure that people are getting the right medicines and they are who they claim they are. The government payroll recently was announced by the Vice President, I think a few weeks ago, to be validated with the Ghana pins, which means that all those who own ghosts in government institutions <laughs> will be disappointed, but that will save the country a lot of money. The banking KYC transactions and um, bank transactions to be validated with Ghana card and PIN will ensure that we are not never blacklisted again and that money laundering will not be entertained in our environment and the transactions will be validated with real people behind it. SIM re-registration to be conducted with a Ghana card will also ensure that we clean our telecom industry system, uh, SIM box fraud and terrorism and criminal activity be a thing of the past. Our Minister of Communication and Digitization has given a deadline for the start of SIM registration using the Ghana card and is ready to rule out the issuance of public infrastructure certificates that will give our electronic devices, applications, websites, etc. a digital identity certificate that is connected to our Ghana card. This will allow citizens to facilitate electronic transactions safely on the internet 
whilst weeding out the 419 and Sakawa scammers. Hopefully, this will result in Ghana being whitelisted and having Ghana IP addresses with genuine certificates. This will allow our country to engage globally in the global digital market as a trusted partner. So, let me conclude by saying that the digital ID provides a secure digital foundation infrastructure upon which our legal identity devices, websites, and other important applications and systems can be built. Post COVID-19, our digital habits will not revert to the, to the old, old habits of analog habits. The digital ecosystem is now on steroids. If we want to succeed in this present and in the future, we need to harness its power and not be consumed by it. This CEO summit will no doubt provide invaluable insight on how our beloved country, Ghana, businesses and individual, individuals can leverage digital to be successful post-COVID-19. We can fix it if we envision the future and plan for digital. Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Moses Baden, a man whose boundless enthusiasm has shown through this summit right from its beginning up until now. Please, another round of applause.